A symbol is anything that is agreed upon to designate something else. The advantage of symbols is that they may communicate complex concepts while being simple in and of themselves. Most symbols are simple drawings that consist of a few pen strokes, while other symbols are objects or actions. The diamond on a wedding ring, for instance, is a symbol. Imagine all the things that can be inferred about a husband who gives his wife a wedding ring mounted with a piece of glass or a random pebble instead of a diamond. An apple is just a fruit and yet has been commonly associated with education, wisdom, and teachers. A wink is an action, but also a symbol. It is often used to communicate sexual interest or to convey a hint. The symbol, whether it's a drawing, action, or object, often conveys a message far more complex than the symbol itself. The foundation of all symbols is agreement. When a symbol is repeatedly used in the same context, agreement regarding that symbol's meaning is formed. As time progresses, the symbol's meaning solidifies. If symbols are used randomly, with constantly changing meanings and associations, they fail to be symbols at all. After all, what good is a symbol that means something different each and every time you see it? Illuminati symbolism used in popular culture such as movies, novels, and TV shows isn't used randomly either. Believing that all-seeing eyes, pyramids, and suns are inserted into random places in a movie is an easy mistake to make. But let's think about that. Let me take you to a backward universe where the meaning of symbols is arbitrary and random. A world where hospital signs lead to fire stations and elementary schools. A world where the play and pause symbols have no bearing on what the buttons actually do. A world where radiation signs, biohazard symbols, don't walk signs, and dollar signs are placed randomly throughout the city and used interchangeably. You get the idea. If used randomly and without repeating context, the symbol fails to be a symbol at all. We don't use symbols randomly, we can't afford to, and neither can the Illuminati. The Illuminati is more dependent on symbols than most, and the reason is that it allows for secure communication no matter where the messages are located. As long as the masses are kept outside of that symbol's agreed upon meaning, any message can be hidden in plain sight. And as stated earlier, not all symbols are drawings. This is so important to remember as we move forward. The Illuminati share a tradition similar to how Christians, Muslims, and Hindus share a tradition. Compared to the overall population, Christians, for example, share similar beliefs on the origin and history of man, the major cosmic players like Jesus, God, and Satan, and what is moral and immoral. The Hindus share a story with hundreds of gods and general consensus regarding their respective histories, duties, personalities, and relationships. If Hindus insisted on telling stories from their traditions, and embedding that tradition into their works of fiction, a repeating story would slowly emerge. These quote-unquote fictional retellings would of course be quickly discovered if each retelling is placed in the same context, but if each retelling contains variations of settings, characters, genders, time frames, and even villains and heroes, it will appear, at least from afar, that they've simply run out of original ideas. Imagine retelling the story of the world nations during the 20th century in the context of a high school classroom where individual students would represent countries. Telling the story of the world nations from the year 1900 to 2000, all in terms of high school students. Geopolitics of the 20th century meets Saved by the Bell. Students become popular, powerful, rise and fall. The character representing America would be isolationist and weak at first and finish intrusive and powerful. The Russian would start weak, have a moment of glory mid-season, and by the end descend once more into mediocrity. And, needless to say, the blonde German kid starts not one, but two huge fights that leave the classroom in shambles. All retellings have three things. Characters, in this case, major world nations. Context, in this case, high school students in a classroom, and a timeline, in this case, the years 1900 to 2000. Now imagine the very same story of nations told in terms of the African savanna, America the eagle, Russia the bear, etc. 
Geopolitics meets The Lion King. After hundreds of these retellings, even with altered characters, context, and timelines, eventually two retellings will resemble each other so much that they will betray the original story from which they were founded. Even the various religions and mythology appear to be nothing more than retellings of a singular root story. Here's food for thought. It's been noticed that many gods in Egyptian mythology have apparent counterparts in Greek, Persian, and Roman mythology. The same characters appearing over and over again in different religions. We commonly come to the faulty conclusion that one mythology and all its stories were absorbed by another mythology who gave the gods different names. Essentially, a religious ripoff. But that doesn't hold true for the Bible. The Bible has always been thought of as distant from Greek and Egyptian mythologies. Themes involving angels and demons, heaven and hell, God and Satan have never been merged with the gods and titans of ancient Greece. But listen to this Bible verse. Here's Revelation chapter 9 verse 11. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. This passage is in reference to an angel that arrives from the bottomless pit, or hell basically, and rules over countless demons. And what the passage is saying is that this angel has names in other mythologies, Abaddon for the Jews and Apollyon for the Greeks. Apollyon is what the ancient Greeks called Apollo, the sun god of Greek mythology. The Bible is basically suggesting that the character Apollo from Greek mythology is a very real character, leads an army of demons, and has alternate names in other religions, and it doesn't end there at all. Almost all of the religions and mythologies contain at least one sun god. The Illuminati only retell one kind of story, the story of the quote-unquote gods. Angels and demons to some, aliens to others, and the gods to the rest. Because of this, the ones writing these stories in modern times are in some ways limited. Because their story is actually based on another story, the gods, they can only add in so much variation. If the retelling adds in too much variation, it will no longer resemble the original story. So how do they manage thousands of accurate and semi-accurate retellings all while you're unaware? Symbols. Symbols are the key. And this is exactly why they, like us, can't afford to abuse them.